Well, my name's Jamie Wayne, and I'm with the Bluff Creek Project. And the goal of the project is to test the Bigfoot hypothesis, which is um, the hypothesis is being that there's a giant undiscovered uh, hairy primate roaming through the woods. So that primate could be out here, um, and we're looking for it. So we have trail cameras placed everywhere around the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot film site. And if we get a Bigfoot that walks through, we're going to get him on video and uh, prove to the world that Bigfoots are real. Roger and Bob rode out that day Until that log jam got in their way They got lucky And was covered in hair Roger and Bob had quite a week yeah. The Pacific Northwest It holds beauty, magnificence, and mystery Fifty years ago, in 1967 About 50 miles north of the small town Willow Creek, California Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin accidentally stumbled upon a female Sasquatch while filming for Roger Patterson's Bigfoot documentary. They managed to get 954 frames, or one minute, of film footage. Among Bigfoot researchers and advocates, the film is known as the Patterson-Gimlin film, or PG film. In the mid to late 90s, the film site vanished. Local resident and owner of Bigfoot Books, Stephen Stroyfert in Willow Creek, California, organized a small group of people known as the Bluff Creek Project. They used old photos, maps, and aerial photos to pinpoint the location of the film site. To help show a little about how this was accomplished, Bluff Creek Project member and Bigfoot researcher Robert Leiterman explains how they found and confirmed the site's location in 2011. So yeah, the big tree, a lot of people when they go to figure out which, which, where the site was, they use that big tree. They are looking for that big tree, so they, this was overgrown, if you will. We've done a lot of work here to kind of bend it out. But imagine if you were, you, you went through that section over there. You know how much fun that was? That was here. So the big tree is a big focal point for it. And that in frame 352, as you can see right here, there it is. That's 352. Well, we, we already took a look at the big trees and we talked about the big trees. Let's take a look at the stumps. For a lot of people, it was about the big tree. Where are the big trees? Which one is it? For me, I figured that wasn't working so well because everybody has their big tree. I said, well, let's focus on the overview, either the 71 or 72 overview taken by Rene de Henda. So on that overview, it was a few years after, after the uh, Patterson Gimlin footage was shot. And so since then it has grown in a little bit, but the 71 showed a lot of clear areas. But what caught my attention was the artifacts, was the stumps, was the logs, uh, the terrain. That all meant something to me. So these are some of the ones I'll point out to you here. Let's, it's a lot more obviously now. Before it was all covered with brush and it was just like tromping through the, the jungles. You could miss it. So here's an example here. It looks like a pretty much just a, a what's left of a stump, but this is what we're calling the big stump. It's one of the larger stumps here and it's just an approximation. Probably hard for you to see that from that far back, but that would just be this guy right here, the big stump. And if you comply it to the Patterson footage, that would be the big stump right here. 
So Patty would be out here somewhere, walking across this way, and, and she had just passed this stump because it's behind her. And she's, it's before she gets to the, it's called the smiley stump over here. But the smiley stump is another stump that here in this shot, it's, it's kind of right there. And in the footage here, it's the same stump that you can't see very well here, but it's the one right below uh, in front of Patty as she's walking. But it's in the background. These are all in the background. So Patty is pretty much back that way. But I do want to show you something special about the smiley stump that pretty much lines everything up. That's what uh, Munns has used, other researchers have used, which makes sense. I can show you that over here. Well, we just took a look at what's called the big stump, and we looked at the leaning stump, we looked at a multiple combinations, and I pointed out the smiley face stump, because it, to me, it, it's an important stump. Here it is. It's really not that tall. You know, you're thinking about it, when you're looking at a perspective of Patty walking past the stump, and you see it the size of Patty, and this is hard to see on this one here, but let me see the color one pulls it out any. Well, yeah, maybe a little better. So there's that stump right here, this is this guy, and there he is right there. And there's Patty, which is back that way, walking past the stump. So you figure out how big is this, you take those or stack of them up to try to estimate how big Patty is. And Patty would be back over this way. But anyhow, what's really important for the shot here is you see this smiley stump right here. You go right above this and you see this tree in the background. That's the snag. Hard to see from here, but that's that's the pretty much the leaning snag uh, that uh, Bill Munch calls the uh, uh, pole cue, cue pole, cue, cue stick pole. Cue stick. We like to call it the leaning stump or the dead snag. Dead snag I like but, better. But I like it better because I don't play pole very well. But it's directly lined up behind here on the hillside. We have trees in the way that block the view. But if you line that guy up directly behind this, right here behind this tree and if you go directly that direction you're going to run into where Roger Patterson was standing when he filmed frame 352. All right so what we just did is we were just over at Smiley Stump lining up pole cue or dead snag and a direct line northerly this will be southerly back this way towards where Roger Patterson was set up for frame 352. So the question that always comes up is, where was Patty? Well, there is no diagram that knows exactly where Patty was. We can guess and say, well, I think she was between here and here, and that's what I'm doing right now. We can guess, but only thing we know is that Patty was the, this side of the smiley stump, and she was this side of the big stump that puts it in a corridor this wide. And she's closer to this one, and the shot was this way, and when she did one of these numbers to look back, and she was looking over her shoulder, she was heading off in a direction. And this is what we think is based on lining up and trying to find what looks best on the photo, as you can see right here. Smiley stump, pole line, patty, big stump. So if we're trying to set this up, so here we are like this, we're saying there's the big stump, there is the smiley stump, there is the pole line. Patty has to be kind of where I'm standing right now. And I have to be able to line that up where Roger is taking that picture straight through, lining this up and seeing me. So Patty would be like this, looking as she's heading this way. So the direction of travel from here is like the last portion of the film where Patty is walking away and, and Roger's filming that. And if you watch the film, he changes the position about three times. So moves this way, gets to 352. He moves up this way and gets as far as some of this area over here where you have some old organic material here that's still kind of here and the pile, there's still a pile of debris. So Roger comes up, starts shooting on an angle this way where his final frames run out as she walks towards what's called the bowling alley, back out this way. And what we can do is we can kind of walk that general direction. And if you look at the last frames, there's two stumps on both sides, and she's funneling her way between these two stumps. So when you look at the stump complex over here, you can only take those trees and imagine them not even there. Just focus on the stumps. So Patty is looking for an escape route towards 
the gap in those stumps. And there's a section that's pretty clear on the gap, which could be, we don't know for sure, but we're thinking that's the direction it's gonna go. And when you think about the whole picture of it, where she, she walks across this way, heads that way, runs, and he runs, but Roger runs out of the film. She crosses, goes up the hillside, according to, uh, to um, Bob Titmus. He runs up, she goes up the hillside, she finds a place to watch the cowboy, the cowboy's buddy, all over the place. And that's what he felt they were up there watching from that position. And when Rene went up to, to the shot, he tried to go up to that position for the shot in 71 or 72 for the overview, and he shot that picture that captured the whole film site here. So you want to see which way? We can guess based on position, but I can show you there's like a gap between some stumps. And we could just walk that way and imagine your Patty looking for an escape pod, walking that direction to get away from this crazy guy with the camera that's following you around, and you're looking for a way out. Although the PG film was shot 50 years ago, the Bluff Creek Project has placed trail cameras all around the film site area in hopes of capturing a photo of a Bigfoot to prove their existence and to show the Bigfoot still roams the forest of the Pacific Northwest. In doing so, the Bluff Creek Project has captured amazing videos and photos of the wildlife in the area. They've also managed to obtain footage of a little furry creature thought to be extinct in the area, the Humboldt Martin. It's only a matter of time before enough concrete evidence is gathered to prove the Bigfoot is in fact real. Well, the sighting over here, uh, back a ways there, Patty was standing across the creek and Roger and I rode up the other side of that, along that, uh, along the creek. She was standing on the opposite side of the creek from us. And so when we come around that bend, Roger was in front of me and of course his horse started jumping around and my horse started jumping around and Roger eventually got off his horse, grabbed a, a camera out of the right hand saddlebag and then started across the creek running with the camera up, you know, like that. and. Uh, then he, the bank went up just a slight bit and Roger kind of stuck his toe in there and fell down on his elbows. And then he got back up and went over to a, a partially, uh, a tree that was down, a, not too big around, probably about that size. And the sand had covered it up fairly well, but he got, stabilized his arms on that. And that's when you see the stabilized part of the film footage. And then she kept right on walking like that. I was still sitting on the other side of the creek sitting on my horse holding him. And Roger ended up about at this angle here and said, Bob, would you ride, would you cover me? Well I, well, I knew what he meant. So I rode across the creek and about at that angle, and she was about approximately there. And so I rode across the creek, stepped down off the horse, and that's when that famous turn of the head uh, uh, was about right down in there.
Sometimes the past is like a million shards of broken glass that keep you where you at. Then I just as soon leave all those memories behind me. Then the question anymore until these questions are the only thing I have. I cannot blame you for embracing anything that clears your path. But that old light is bound to keep you in the dark. It